what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here in this video we're going to be talking about uh kevin williamson's original plans for the uh new scream trilogy that he had in mind when he first went to west craven uh with the idea of a new trilogy now all this information is stuff that came out earlier this morning sometime last night because he was on a podcast the shockwave podcast where they were uh discussing uh kevin williamson's career and he shared some tidbits on the original plans uh on the original plans that he had in mind for a fifth screen movie following the events of screen four his original intent with screen four and also how he had everything ready to go he had he went to the first thing that stuck out to me was how Kevin Williamson basically said that he went to Wes Craven before anybody else with this new idea for a trilogy. He had everything mapped out with the idea of, of Scream 4, Scream 5, and Scream 6. He went to Wes Craven first before going to the studio. Because remember, at the time, the Scream franchise and everything regarding Scream was through Dimension Films. And I believe Dimension at the time was owned by the Weinsteins. And the Weinsteins had a lot of hands-on and a lot of influence in the way things went on. Uh, Kevin Williamson also shared the fact that he had to rewrite the script 10 times. He had to go back and rewrite the script over 10 different times because of the fact that the wine scenes just were not satisfied with what he had brought to them. Specifically, he was talking about Bob Weinstein, and now not once ever do I, do I feel in this in this in this uh, podcast that he's on did he disrespect Bob Weinstein. He is very he's very humble humble throughout the whole time. He's talking about the disagreements they had and the creative frustration that uh, he was just getting from him because he realized at some point he he thought to himself, you know, this relationship isn't going to work out, and the turbulence and all of this stuff that went on with Scream Four. These are some of the same things that plagued plagued Scream Three. And Kevin, at this at this day at this stage in the game, keep in mind Kevin Williamson was busy with the Vampire Diaries at the time of Scream Four. So when you're focusing focusing and working on all these major things, you have a hit TV series on the air at the moment, and then you have Bob Weinstein coming at you and telling you that not one but nine different different rewrites or different versions of a script that you've now constructed are not passable or not acceptable. He that's going to cause some frustration. Bob Weinstein apparently. Uh, was just two the things that he would mention or want to recommend and in regards to what uh williamson had envisioned was just some things that williamson was not on the same page but they were not on on the same page there creatively uh, he also brought up the fact that the original plan for screen four he talked about his original plans and how the ending was different and how the opening was going to be different uh there's a plethora of different openings that i know were in the have been talked about in regards to screen four i believe one of the openings actually had sydney prescott being our opening attack and leaving her leaving her her fate open the air and then the movies are just going to jump two years that's one thing i'm glad they did not do uh another thing he went over was of course the original ending now for all, for those of you who have found this script online or have just read and heard about it and just read and watched all these different videos where we all have talked about this all of us in the horror community here on YouTube. Uh, Kevin Williamson screen for originally before he left and walked out and left everything for the Weinsteins to go pick up Aaron Kruger and bring Aaron Kruger in to finish off screen four. Uh, Kevin Williamson screen four ended at the at Kirby's house. Jill had seemingly gotten away with it. Sydney and Kirby were presumably dead. Uh, Dewey came into the house, his officers and Hicks, I believe, was also with him. They came into the house. Uh, Jill was stretched out on the stretcher as we do get to see, see her get stretched out on the stretcher in Scream 4. But then back in the house, we hear that we hear one of the officers or somebody, a paramedic, say, we have a live one or she's or we have a pulse. And then the movie is just going to end there. It's going to end on a cliffhanger of us not knowing if this person that was alive was either Kirby or Sydney. Now what he went on to say in this podcast was that originally his screen five was going to take us back to college so we can go off of a, a few things here sydney prescott has already grown up and she for all intents and purposes uh i don't think it's actually even mentioned if sydney even graduated from college or finished college i'm gonna say she let's say she just finished college if she didn't she just didn't but at this point in the stage in the game if we're going back to college that tells me that Kirby Reed, Hayden Pantier's character, was going to be in this script. They had plans to bring Kirby back. Her her fate was left up in the air on purpose. Uh, and if they had plans, if he's in this podcast saying that 
the original plans were was for Screen 5 to go back to a college setting, I'm willing to bet that the plans were for Kirby Reed's character. Kirby Reed was going to be our new Sydney. She was going to be our new focus focus point. And uh, I know a lot of rumors have been spread on the internet about what Sydney's role would have been. Because ultimately, I believe Sydney Prescott would have been revealed as being alive as well. We would have found out in Screen 5 that not only is Kirby alive, but her and Sydney are alive. Jill still seemingly is getting away with it because uh, a lot of rumors stated that Sydney would be suffering from amnesia. Now, in regards to how a new killing spree would have started up, he didn't really get into too many details on that. I really wish he would have spoken on that a bit so we can see how exactly that would have played out. And then again, I'm just really going off of assumptions here. If we were going back to a college setting, I'm willing to bet that this person we were going to be following in this college setting wasn't going to be Sidney Prescott again at college. It was going to be Kirby Reed. Uh, that or we're going to be following Jill, someone who we know is a is not innocent. And maybe we're going to see her get played by a ghost face uh, killing spree. I really am interested. I I'm really interested to see if we will ever get to see some of these treatments that he had in mind, or if he will ever go into a little bit more detail about this after we actually see the screen five that radio silence is going to bring out. Um, but he shared all, all these details in this podcast. Uh, the fact that he went to Wes Craven initially with the idea for the new trilogy, and he already had ideas for screen four, five and six mapped out. Uh, Wes Craven was on, so then he went to the Weinsteins. The Weinsteins were on, so uh, everything looked like it was going to be just easy, easy breezy. But of course, the Weinsteins and the same things that plagued Scream 3 plagued Scream 4. Not only this time around, it's just more so the Weinsteins and their frustration and their creative differences with what uh, Kevin Williamson's script was. The fact that they didn't want the movie to end on a cliffhanger. They didn't want, uh, they didn't like his opening. They didn't like his ending. They didn't like uh several different things that he that he had in the script i believe in one draft he had sydney killed off early on or left her fate up in the air um several different things that they just did not like and see eye to eye on so of course he became frustrated over that and ultimately that's what led to him walking out because I, I, at that point he he seemingly he's he's on a time schedule here he when screen four was in the works kevin williamson was working on one of the hottest shows on television at the time so i can understand you being frustrated when you have uh, your producers and your uh, and your your executive producers and your just your producers in general, like the Weinstein's, coming back at you all the time saying, "Hey, change this. No, we don't want to do it like this. Do it like this. Oh, well, don't you think you could do it this way? Hey, this doesn't work. Try this. No, don't do that." Like back and forth, and him saying he had to go through this ten times, ten different rewrites. I don't know what how what percentage of of these ten times he had to rewrite. If he had to rewrite like a large chunk of the script, it was just him going back and rewriting the ending, which in itself could be a large chunk uh, because you have to. It's just that's a big of a headache for me to even think about. And I can understand why he grew frustrated. That's ultimately what led to him coming out and saying that he was not doing Screen 5. Because remember back in early 2013 or in the year 2013, for those of you who have been following and waiting for Screen 5 for so many years since Screen 4, I'm pretty sure you'll recall that Kevin Williamson flat out said when asked one time in 2013 that he was not doing Screen 5. This is why. These creative these creative differences and the constant interference from the Weinsteins messing up his ideas and they're just constantly messing with him and coming up with all these different things that they think would be better from what he had originally intended. Uh, that's why he ultimately came out and said he's not doing Screen 5 because also at the same time over the years we were seeing that the Weinsteins were trying to find writers for Screen 5. See, on top of Screen 4 not only being a a low financial success compared to the others, they lost their writer. Kevin Williamson already had treatments ready to go, and he revealed in this podcast that his Screen 5 was going to take us back to college. He had treatments ready to go and every intention of turning these treatments into full-length scripts, uh, focusing on these characters that he wanted to focus on. But the frustration that built up while he was dealing with screen four led to him ultimately saying he's not going to want to even attempt to do a screen five let alone his vision for screen six with the constant creative differences between him and the weinsteins um i just really liked uh, all these tidbits we got to find out today from kevin williamson and the fact that his relationship with wes craven was just very uh trustworthy it seems the fact that he went to west before anyone else with this idea for the new trilogy and the fact that uh he had already screen five and six and even screen four already mapped out kevin williamson he he has a brain and he, i gotta respect somebody who has a full trilogy not not necessarily already completely written but when you know exactly what you want to do 
and it's going to be three films when you have a solid trilogy already mapped out and you know what you want to do with it and then you have all these complications coming up while you're working on one of the hottest shows on the air at the time i can understand why he wouldn't want to do a screen five under the regime with the weinsteins that's probably that's why honestly it's not even that shocking that with the weinsteins not being involved with screen five he's back on as an executive producer he's not writing the script but he's involved with the screen movie again he wasn't going to have anything to do with screen five as long as the weinsteins were doing something with it because of the fact of all this turbulence that went on behind the production of screen four and I'm pretty sure all of us who have searched, researched this stuff and stayed up to date while Screen 4 was in the works, we know all of this information. Kevin Williamson had plans to take us back to college with Screen 5. It's a shame we'll never get to see what he actually envisioned. Maybe some tidbits of his ideas get, get thrown into our new script writers for Screen 5 from Radio Silence. Uh, maybe we'll even get to see some of his treatments blended in with their ideas. I think that would be a very cool combination of things to see. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.